Okay, I know, everybody wants to see the injectors go back in and the engine run. Trust me, no one wants to see that more than me. But before I can do that, there's one more thing that I need to do. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. This is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG that I'm slowly turning into an overland camper. But before this camper can go anywhere camping, I need to get the engine running, which means getting the new injectors in. And before those new injectors go in, I have to undo something that I've done. Because once I got all four of those injectors out, I put oil into the top of each cylinder. And what I don't want to do is send all that oil through this really expensive piece of exhaust. So how do you get oil out of the top of an engine? Well, we're gonna see if my idea works today. And no, I'm not just gonna turn the key and crank it over and hope that it all comes out through the top. At least, not the first step. It'd probably work, but with my luck, I'd likely end up bending a rod. So how? Well, really the only option is to suck it out through the top, but the hole for the injector is tiny, so it's not like I can just stick a vacuum cleaner on there and pull it out. Or can I? Well, this is a great little vacuum and I've got a really small tip adapter for it, but I don't think this is the right job for this tool. So where are we going to find a little tiny vacuum cleaner that can fit down through the hole that this goes in? We're gonna make one. I mean, come on, what else would you expect me to do? Mm-hmm, you know what's coming. This is a 3D printed siphon jet or eductor or venturi. I didn't design this, I downloaded it for free and I'll put a link in the video description if it's something that you will find useful. But this is gonna be the basis of our tiny but powerful vacuum cleaner. Because this is a siphon, it uses high pressure to create a vacuum. Technically it's creating low pressure, not a vacuum, but you know what I mean. So we can use compressed air as a power source, and then we can connect a really small tube to go down into the cylinders and suck out the oil, hopefully. The print already incorporates threads on the inlet so we can thread in an adapter. Easy as that. Now this siphon was not designed to operate at 150 pounds of air like my shop, so we're gonna put a regulator on to dial the air pressure down. Luckily I have one off of one of my paint guns, so we can just thread it onto the adapter. This will let me accurately set the pressure to, well, I don't know because I can't read the gauge anymore. And as far as that small diameter tubing, well, it's just quarter inch airline and it just pushes in doesn't get much easier than this. Perfect fit. Now we're also going to need something to catch the oil in that comes out because the siphon is just moving it. So how about an old oil jug and I'm thinking we just shove it in here with a funnel in it. I can hopefully get the siphon up above here so it just drops down into the funnel and into the jug. Now to make things a little bit easier, I've mounted the adductor to a piece of wood that's clamped onto the frame so that I don't have to worry about holding on to all of this while I'm trying to get this little tiny hose into the top of each cylinder. Now in order to know that what I'm doing is actually removing the oil, before I start sucking anything out, I'm going to take a look inside the cylinder. I'm going to do this using the same little boroscope camera that I used to inspect the cylinders after I got the injectors out. I'll start by pulling the little 3D printed caps out that I put in there to stop any debris from going down into the cylinders while we were working on everything else. And of course I'll put those back in as soon as I'm done. They'll stay in until the injectors go in. Let's see what is in cylinder one. Down in. A little bit difficult to, there we go. So we can see there's a, still a fair amount of oil on the top of that piston. So it should be pretty good to get in there and suck some of that out. What about number two? There. Is 
Same thing, not as much, mostly in the center, but there's still oil in the center. That one probably wouldn't be too concerned with turning the engine over as it is. And that to me says that the oil has been leaking past the rings in that cylinder a little bit. That's okay. It's been in there quite a while. Let's get into number three here. Come on. There we go. Same thing. We got some in the center, but not flooded all the way around. And actually, maybe we may actually only be looking at the center on number one as well, because that piston is higher up. Into number four. All right. I can see the reflection. There's oil in there. There we go. Same thing as number one. We may just be looking at the center here, but there's definitely oil in there. So let's see if we can get it out of all four. I have shoved a little shop rag in the top of the funnel here just because I don't know how much air and oil combination is going to be coming out and I don't want it kind of spraying back up and getting oil all over everything. Because this runs off of air, I will need to have the compressor running, which means it's going to get a little noisy. But before I fire the compressor up and leave it running, I'll give you a quick demonstration of kind of the suction that this is creating. So I don't have any valves to turn this on or off. It's just basically on when the air is connected. So I'm going to start by connecting the air, which will make a little bit more noise. So I'm running, I believe, around 20 PSI. And you can hear the difference there. You can actually, you might be able to see, it actually starts sucking my finger in. So it's definitely creating suction here, which should work. Let's see what happens if we stick it in. Kind of sounds like suction in a dentist office. Seems to me it's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Such a simple little device and it works so well. Now it's just a repeat in each of the cylinders and seeing what comes out. It's pretty quick and easy and it's doing exactly what I had hoped it would. You might be concerned about the oil damaging the plastic, but uh, for a few cents, I can just print another one. So the only issue that I'm having right now is that cylinders one and four are up at the top of the compression stroke and two and three are down low. And because this comes off of a coil, it's got a curve to it. So by the time I get low enough, it's actually off to the side of the cylinder where I need it to be in the middle. When we're up higher, it's closer to the center. But let's take a look with the camera again and see how one and four look because it pulled a lot out of there. Let's see number one. There we go. I think we got most of that out. There's still a little bit in there. Obviously, we're not blowing the surface dry, but it looks compared to what was in there before. Much less fluid. Check four as well. Quite a bit came out of four, but there was also quite a bit in there. There we go, same thing. Definitely have come down in the amount of fluid in those. Still gonna see if I can get a bit more out of both of those. Uh, I'm gonna try and straighten the end of that air tube so we can get a straight shot down. Try a little bit of heat here. Ooh, I just refilled this, so it's uh, probably a little over full on butane. But just a little bit of heat in that, and then uh, some persuasion opposite direction of the curve. Doesn't need to be perfectly straight. Just looking for more straight. I think that's pretty good and check out all the oil that it's dumping. 
I'll go through each cylinder again, but I think we've got pretty much everything now. So I basically let this run now until I'm not getting anything out of any of the cylinders at all. And I'm pretty impressed with this little 3D printed setup. With the understanding, of course, we're not going to get every single droplet of oil out. We have got the majority of the oil out, and that's pretty easy. Now I have no concerns with cranking the engine over because I know we're not going to bend a rod. Probably wouldn't have anyway, but now I know. Well done to the designer of this. Very useful and free. Let's take one last look in the top of each cylinder before we crank the engine over. It's not going to be perfect, but let's take a look. There we go. It's dirty, really, really dirty. It's dirty. But mostly dry. I'm just not quite tall enough to see without getting up on the truck. All right, looks good. Number three looks all right. There we go. The next piece of this plan is to actually crank the engine over. Now, because I have the injectors out anytime we would have a compression stroke, all of the air should come shooting out the top. So I'm just going to place a paper towel over the top, maybe with some weight, to hopefully capture any plume of oil and debris that comes out the top. Again, this isn't going to be perfect, but it should get a little bit more of what's in there out. So I've started with a half a piece of shop towel, just loosely in the top of each injector hole. And then I got a piece of half inch steel flat bar sitting on top to hopefully hold some of that in place. Uh, we're gonna try giving it a crank here and see what happens. Oh, I forgot to uh, block my fuel return line. I should do that quickly because that's uh, just going to start dumping fuel everywhere. Huh. Luckily, the fuel system was mostly full of air. Whoops. Thankfully, my uh, vice grips were not too far away. Now I'm going to pull the paper towel out and see if there's any moisture or oil residue on them. Then we'll try cranking with nothing there and see if anything comes out. And stick the camera down inside one more time. Start with the half inch flat bar, my hold down out. And do we get anything on number one? Not really. Number two. Not really. Number three, nothing. And, ah, bunch on number four. That's probably fuel that uh, leaked out the back of the line. Yeah, that's definitely diesel. So I for sure want to get the camera back in there because if I filled that cylinder full of diesel, we got to get the suction back out again. Is it going to look any different this time? I don't know. Well, not much different there. We've been in a different position because the engine's been rotating, but let's just have a look. Uh, see if I can see the, the cylinder walls here, see if they look any cleaner than they were before. Yeah, side looks pretty good. Still lots of carbon in the top, but the side of the wall looks pretty good. How about number two? Now this one's likely to be up high now. Come on, get in there. Yeah, so cylinder two is up at the top now. Nothing concerning in there. There is still a little bit of, uh, I would say oil pooled in the middle, but not enough to worry about. Number three. Same 
same thing. Still a little bit of moisture in the middle there. Maybe we should do another round of suction, but this number four looks like this is the one that we may have. So I would say the, D, we did get diesel in here because the side of the injector wall is wet, or the side of the uh, injector bore is wet. Yeah, and we definitely got fluid in this one now. We'll get the suction out, hit number four again. Whoops, uh, that's a pretty big difference in the atomization suctioning diesel compared to oil. Well, I'm glad I redid that because we definitely got some diesel out of number four. It wouldn't have been enough to do anything, but it's out of there now. now I'm going to try giving this a crank over with nothing covering the top because I don't think we're going to get fluids shooting out. Let's see if we get anything at all. All right, here we go. I'm trying to peek around the corner of the cab. But... I didn't see anything coming out of any of those. I'll take a quick look at the video, but I think we're done with cleaning up the inside of the engine. The last thing that I have to do is throw these caps back in and wait for my injectors to arrive. Hopefully, they're here for next week. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the links in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.